Overnight, we received new video of a deadly shooting involving Houston police. An officer shot and killed the suspect on Scott Street near Noah on the southeast side. ABC 13 reporter Courtney Fisher is live with what a witness says happened. Courtney? Yeah, good morning, Samika. The chief says that he has seen the officer's body camera video, and it shows that the officer gave commands and that the suspect refused to back down. The chief says he's not releasing the video right now, but there is video of the shooting that's out there. It's circulating on social media. You're about to see it. I just want to show you, before you watch it, know that we have stopped it right before the shooting happened, but you can still hear those shots fired. Yeah, you can hear the officer fire several gunshots. It appears that the black officer fired his gun several times. We don't know how many times hitting and ultimately killing this black man. It happened around 6.30 p.m. on Scott Street. The chief says someone called 911 initially, saying that there was a guy with a gun walking around. When the officer arrived, he first looked out, took out his taser. He tried to get the man to cooperate. That's according to the chief. A couple minutes later, the officer then put his taser away and took out his gun. The 30-year-old suspect still had his gun tucked in his waistband. The chief says he reached for it and the officer fired. This is the fourth deadly officer involved shooting with HPD in the last three and a half weeks. When a reporter told the chief, a witness said she saw the man put his hands up. Here's how the chief reacted. I know there's people that would love to see this city burned by lying, but that's a lie. So when I passed through the light, I seen the black man was chasing the policeman around the car, and he had he still had his gun drawn onto him. So when I went down Scott, I made a U-turn, and I was still I was like literally right across from the police car. Like the police car was right here, and I was right here. And um, he was telling him get on the ground, get on the ground. He didn't want to get on get on the ground. So and you hear that was a woman who says she saw the whole thing and she says that the again suspect still had the gun tucked in his waistband when he was shot by that officer. The chief says that he has talked to the man's family and the sister of this man told the chief that her brother had been drinking. His name has not been released. We know he's 30 years old. For now, reporting live, Courtney Fisher, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Courtney. More breaking news now. Former Houston Astro and two-time All-Star Bob Watson has died. His career started in the 60s and ended after he broke barriers as a general manager. ABC 13 reporter Jeff Ealing is live this morning at the Education Center named for him with how Watson is being remembered this morning. Good morning to you, Jeff. And good morning to you, Samika. Yeah, you need to look no further than right here to see the impact that Bob Watson had, not just on the Houston Astros, but the city of Houston itself. And oh yeah, Bob Watson was once in a movie. Come back, come back here right now. That was Bob Watson's cameo appearance in the sequel to the Bad News Bears film of the Astrodome back in 1977. Watson had a much longer and more storied career in professional baseball. You know, he played 14 years as a Houston Astro. He was in the All-Star Game in 1973 and 1975. When he hung up his cleats, he broke ground in the front office as well. He became the general manager for the Astros in 93 and then went on to become the first African-American general manager to win a World Series with the New York Yankees in 1996. Earlier this year, he was here at the dedication for the Bob Watson Education Center at the Houston Astros Youth Academy Complex. Fans still clamoring to get photos and a word with the Houston icon. During the ceremony, he talked of his love for the city and Daryl Wade, who runs the Astros Youth Academy, called him a real game changer. Kids will be able to see what Bob did in his career to show anybody can do it. And I, Bob had, I read something the other day, Bob said he was wanted to be the stop being called the first, the first the manager, the first black manager, first black GM. Because of Bob, there are many others now, and there will be more thanks to Bob. Bob Watson is survived by his wife, his daughter, and his son. He passed from kidney disease, Bob. Watson was 74 years old.
Reporting live, Jeff Ealing, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Thanks, Jeff. And a lot of people are wishing well to this guy, the other former Astros manager who's battling COVID-19. Art Howe is still in the hospital, but is communicating with family and friends. He first noticed symptoms earlier this month and was taken to the hospital on Tuesday when his condition worsened. The 73-year-old played for the Astros from 1976 to 82 and then managed the team from 89 to 93. Art Howe has to go 24 hours without a fever before doctors will release him from the hospital. Well, gyms across Texas reopened Monday. ABC 13 reporter Charlie Etsidi spoke with managers at one gym about the restrictions you will now see. Charlie? Hey, good morning to you, Samika. We are here at Tough Mudder in Sawyer Heights, and the way this usually works is you rotate stations around the gym and share equipment, but obviously that can't happen anymore. So what they've done is they put this tape on the floor to basically make an area for every single person. They're staggering people throughout the gym. They're putting your equipment in your own area so you don't have to touch it. Just some of the many changes that are happening in gyms across the state. Um, they have been extremely supportive through this whole thing. A pandemic has not stopped the clients or the staff of Tough Mudder from getting their workouts. At noon, Monday through Friday, we do live workouts um, through Zoom and Facebook Live. They've been up for the challenge this entire time, and now on Monday, a new one, learning how to come back together. Instead of people walking around and using the same weights, everybody's going to have the same weight at their own station. Governor Greg Abbott says capacity must be limited, showers and Locker rooms must remain closed and equipment must be disinfected after each use. Soul Cycle, they're going to be taking temperatures. The YMCA will be social distancing and 24 hour fitness will be asking you to make a reservation. All right, and so one of the big questions here, do I need to wear a mask? Do I need to wear gloves? Well, it all depends on your gym. Here at Tough Mudder, they are recommending it, but it is not required. And also, if you're not quite ready to go back to the gym yet, definitely ask about online classes. Here at Tough Mudder, they offer those for those people who aren't quite ready to come back in but still want to work up a sweat at home. Charlie Etsidi, ABC 13, Eyewitness News. Thanks, Charlie. Well, as Charlie said, you do need to check ahead and look over your gym's rules because not all gems require gloves, but we've heard that there's been a bit of a run on them. One of our editors here, who is a gym fanatic, is anxious to get back to the gym. He spent the last few days trying to find gloves, though. When he ran out of options, he searched online. A couple of options on Amazon under $10 were sold out until June or July. He was able to snag a pair, but at a higher price point, closer to $20. And that editor, David Mackey, looking for those gloves. Well, some other items that fitness fanatics have not been able to find, free weights, exercise bands, and bicycles for those who still aren't very comfortable going to the gym. Well, if you do go on Monday, doctors recommend you take a shower just as soon as you get home. And don't forget to disinfect your gloves and also the seat in your car. Remember, if all else fails, you can get by with garden gloves or golfing gloves. Houston Museum of Natural Science opens today. One of the first museums in Houston to reopen and our reporter TJ Parker is there live. TJ, good morning. Hey, good morning to you, Tom. Yeah, this is great news for people who love to go to the museums. The Houston Museum of Natural Science, as you had mentioned, opens up today, but at 25% capacity. We're opening safely, and that's what's most exciting. We figured out how to do it. <laughs> Now here at the Museum of Natural Science, all interactive exhibits are no longer touchable. There will be floor spacers, signs to remind people of social distancing and a lot of hand sanitizer stations. And we looked at our museum very seriously in a new way and realized there's so much here you don't have to be close to to enjoy. And we've got so many exhibits and so often when you bring kids, they race around and they don't see anything. I think this could be the best trip you ever make to a museum because your kids will need to stay with you. They will need to look at things and really look at them, not just race past them. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. There are other museums opening. Take a look at this list. The Lone Star Flight Museum opening up on the 23rd. There you will practice social distancing and you can't touch the exhibits. The Holocaust and Buffalo Soldiers Museums open up on the 26th. Masks are required there. And on June 1st, the Children's Museum will also reopen with similar restrictions. Again, a lot of these museums are limiting the number of people coming into their museums. So before you head out to the museums, do check in with them before going out. 
Live in the Museum District, I'm TJ Parker, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Thanks, TJ. Well, a Texas Cowboys gymnastics routine is going viral. Watch. <laughs> Is this the famous disc now? Yes! Yes! <laughs> okay. That's Guy Bell trying to wow his daughter by turning a rail into a balance beam in Amarillo. Guy filmed this on a whim, maybe a friend did, after seeing his daughter do some balance work and, uh, Hey, he's, he's pretty not good. bad. Yeah, he's, he really isn't bad on the beam. <laughs> not bad. Um, I'm showing the two up. of you up. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right about mm -hmm. that. Can't <laughs> argue with you on that. <laughs> there, I knew. <laughs> Even then, <laughs> it's hard to balance. You need really good core strength. All right, weather wise for today, we do have flash flood watch in effect that goes in effect tomorrow morning starting at 4 a.m. until 7 p.m. Saturday. For today, some widely scattered downpours. We will see some intense rains coming in today, but it will be very isolated, especially north of I 10, where we could be dealing with a brief one to two inch fall rainfall rates. Uh, the excessive rain is expected to continue through tomorrow. There will be a slight Light threat for some strong, even severe thunderstorms for today. This afternoon into the evening, most of that rain does dry up. We'll see a little bit of a lull before that wi widespread rains moves in. Here we're over next 24 hours. You're seeing those isolated pockets of over two inches possible with the scattered thunderstorms today. But when you factor in the widespread rains over the weekend, we're still looking at two to four inches over six inches isolated. That flash flood watch uh, in effect tomorrow, but we could be dealing with the excessive rain this afternoon and and then spreading into Saturday. Here's what Saturday is looking like. Quiet this morning, but by Saturday, the radar is going to be very active as those widespread rains move through. And then we're anticipating most of that rain to continue through the lunchtime hour and then taper off by the evening. We are now looking drier for Sunday. The severe weather threat on Saturday isn't at zero, but it is on the low end. We're talking the possibility of damaging winds, some hail, and maybe even a brief spin up, a few tornadoes. So we'll be monitoring that for you. As those storms dry up, Sunday afternoons looking pretty dry. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, some lower humidity, also some cooler temperatures during the morning. All right, and that's all the time we have for this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. Make sure you have that umbrella.